That's right. Amen. At the end of the day, God is not looking for more hypocritical people. That's right. Yes. Come on, that do nothing more than thump their Bibles and, right. and talk their halos and talk about how holy they are. Uh-huh. And at the same thing, he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. It's you got to have a relationship with God. Yeah, that's right. Come on, God doesn't care about how many scriptures you can recite. He doesn't care about how much Bible you can quote. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. Come on, he's, 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 he's interested in a relationship. God wants to know you. Y'all have mercy. Amen. He wants to know you in a personal manner. Amen. And if I were you, if God is trying to get to know me, I would get to know God. Somebody put your hands together. I would, I would, I would get to know God. And so we, we talked about uh, the worship and how it is in building relationships is important that you uh, get into the worship of the Lord, that you get into a place where you can not only facilitate and entertain the presence of God, but how you can hold God's attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how you can hold God's attention. Watch out. Uh, we've also talked about how not to be in the presence of God and allow God to overlook you. You and me are not saying anything. Uh, but the Bible tells us to come humble as little children. And I don't know about you, but in my uh, academy, when we bring out the popsicles, y'all ain't saying nothing yet. Uh, that none of those children will let us overlook them, y'all. Even if we got our eye on them, they still. Begin to, y'all, they said, let me try this again. They will still begin to stand on their feet and wave their hand as if they are to say, there's no other way in the world I'm going to let you skip over me, y'all. Lord, I wish somebody had that mindset in the house of God where you just say, Lord, there's no way in the world I will let you pass me by. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Whatever you got going on and whatever you are passing out, I want some. Yes, yes. I need to look up to the Lord and tell him, Lord, I just want some. I, whatever you're giving out, I just want some. Amen. Amen. Now listen, this, this morning I, I want to just talk to you briefly. Um, I want to deal with Job because Job came to a set of place. Job said, though... You slayed me. He slayed me. What? Yes. yes. Well, I trust him. And it takes a relationship. That's right. It takes a relationship to be able to handle ah. the bitter Jesus. with the sweet. Yes, God. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Because sometimes without a relationship, when things begin to get bitter, then we begin to get on our way. Am I right about it? Uh, uh, we have all kind of departing speeches. Yes. We have exiting, y'all ain't talking to me. We have exiting speeches that we practice and rehearse. I ain't got to take this. Y'all ain't saying, I can do bad by myself. Y'all ain't saying nothing at all. You don't know who you, if you don't like it, hit the road, Jack. We have all kind of exit. That's right. Exiting speeches. Okay, I got one real folk. One, can I, let me see if I can find a few more. Come on, if you ain't going to help me, then you, you I ain't got no help yet. Come on, you, you need to stop being so sensitive. It's an exiting. It's, it's my way of getting out of what I don't feel like I like anymore of being into but sometimes in the balance of a relationship you have to learn how to eat the whole scroll yes yes Uh sometimes I heard an old country an old country preacher said like this he said in your mouth uh, there is tongue and there are teeth and he said now uh, sometimes the teeth inevitably bite. will bite down on the tongue. It's not that he don't like the tongue. It's not that he tried to, but just uh, inevitably, whenever you're working that close together, there's bound y'all ain't talking to me. There's bound to be a mishap. Can I just speak to you? This country preacher says, but at no time has he ever went 
witness the tongue saying, man, I'm out of here. Y'all ain't saying nothing yet. Uh, uh, but even when it's bleeding, he just slides back in his position and, and work out whatever we got to work out so this don't happen again. Yeah, I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, work out whatever you got to work out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because sometimes God will give you a tough assignment. Yes, yes. And if you're not in relationship with God, you will feel like it's a setup from the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, God began to come through a man and began to display his glory and how proud he is of humanity. Are y'all taking this out? God sometimes will brag on some of you that are in here right now. I know the enemies made you feel like your life has been one complete failure. Uh, nothing you do seems to work out right. I wish I could talk to somebody. Uh, but I want you to understand that God is in somewhere sitting high looking low saying look you're doing alright to me. Just keep on pressing your way. I dare somebody to look at your neighbor. This is neighbor morning. Come on look at him and tell him keep on pressing your way. Keep on pressing. Look at him with a smile and tell them there's a blessing in your pressing. There's a blessing in your pressing. And so God, you know the story. God is now, uh, he's, he's fellowshipping with the sons of God and here comes Satan to rise and raise himself up amongst God's most holy. And now, uh, Satan, what are you doing? He says, I'm going to and fro up and down in the earth seeing whom I may devour. Mm -hmm. Now, now, listen, the enemy, uh, I heard Mother Johnson, uh, God bless her, who said a long time ago, the devil may be the father of all lies, but he did, did tell the truth one time. <laughs> he said, I'm going in the earth seeing how I can wreak havoc amongst your people. Mm -hmm. He said, I get tickled. Y'all, I'm paraphrasing, I'm speaking into his heart. Uh, I get tickled at the fact that some folk can get turned around so easily. Easily. I'm entertained by those who say they know you and love you and adore you and would do nothing to hurt you. If I touch them, how quickly they forget how good I get tickled by it and I feel vindicated because you kicked me out of glory and so now I'm going to mess up the praises of your people. But can I just encourage you that in spite of what the enemy attempts on your life, do not let him have your praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Don't let him have your praise. And so the Bible says that he says unto Satan, God says unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? The devil answered, well, you know you got your hand on Job, and uh, even I know that uh, if I try, I can't do anything against him. Isn't that a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. testimony? Mm -hmm. isn't, that a, isn't that remarkable how the word of God is in order? The Bible says, whom God have in your hand. No man can pluck him out. He said, can't no man pluck. The Bible says, if God be for you. Who can? <laughs> who can be against you? in that powerful, a powerful resolution. And so he says, you know what the word says, I can't touch him. If you be for him, I can't be against him. God, I can't do anything. God said, well, I, I'll tell you what, I'll take my hand off of him just for a season. And you can touch anything you want, but you cannot, you won't, you won't touch his heart. Y'all, y'all not saying anything. And so the Bible says that here comes Satan with smiles and grins and, and all of this corruption. He goes on and divides a plan and his plan is I'm going to turn the man of God against God. Are y'all still there? I'm going to, and how do you ever felt like the enemy was trying to push you out of a relationship that you've established with your God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. Come on, come on. He's aggravated you enough to make you say I'm not going back to church. Come on, I wish I had some help. Come on, that's why one of the greatest strategies of Satan is, is to interfere right in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Because if you get in the presence of the Lord and interfere, he can make it look like God doesn't have any power over what's going on, even in his presence. But you got to understand God. God is not moved 
by the enemy to tempt when he already understands that if I be for him. Yes, yes. Glory be to God. If I be for him, then who can be against him? Sometimes in a relationship with God, you got to take this better with the sweet. Sometimes God's answer is no. God cannot have it. God, no. God cannot just do it. No. God, will you let it? No. God, will you let this bitter cup pass? No. Somebody shout no. No. Sometimes God will tell you no. And like a, and, and just like a spoiled brat, we, we hate to hear God say no. And we pray again as if God didn't give us an answer. But God did give us an answer. And his answer was no. Come on, be still and know that I am God. I wish I could touch you where you are. And so sometimes we in a relationship, we got to think for ourselves and say God knows better than us. Are, are you still here? My thoughts are not God's thoughts. My ways are not God's ways. And so I get in a subtle place of God and I say, God, I just want you to look out over my life and whatever I got to go through, I just need you to go with me. Oh, Oh God, anybody ever felt God assurance that he would never leave or forsake you? Come on, anybody ever felt the assurance of God that lets you know that I am with you even until the end? Come on, has he ever just dropped a seed in the midst of calamities that brought you back to a reassured place that my God has not forgotten about me? I wish I had some help in this house this morning. Come on, has he ever done anything that was right in the midst of a storm that lets you know that God is is concerned about what I got going on. Somebody right back and shout glory in this house. Yeah. Shout glory again. Yeah. It's the relationship with God that allows us to understand that this thing won't always be easy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this thing won't always be easy. But as long as the Lord is with me, I, got, I can go through whatever I have to go through. That's relationship. That's why when we stand before the altar, we say for better. Oh, of course. Because a part of the reality is, is that there will be a worse. Yes. That's right. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. That's right. The reality is, is that uh, every day you won't feel like being in Sunday service. Come on. Come on. Amen. <laughs> The reality is that not every day you'll feel like encouraging somebody in the Lord. <laughs> Lord, I thought I would have touched you. Then. <laughs> but in spite of that, it's my relationship with God that brings me into a spiritual obedience. It's my willingness to decrease. To decrease. That's that AM tone. You know? It ain't waking up yet. <laughs> My willingness to decrease so God can, can increase. increase. And so we're talking about establishing relationships. And so this song this morning, the praise and worship begin to sing. It talked about through all that I had to go through. Uh -huh. Not just the stuff that I have gone through, but some stuff I had. I would have went around it if I could, but I had to go through. Yeah. That's right. Are y'all still there? Right. Then the songwriter says, Lord, it was you. Jesus. Who was doing what? Pulling, pulling me through. Thank you, God. Pulling me through. It was God that was pulling me through. Amen. And I don't know, I don't know. That song, we ran into it um, over, over the course of uh, two nights. And God began to pump that into our spirit. And we wanted to bring it back home. Amen. Amen. We wanted to bring it home so it would bless the house. To understand that through all that I've gone through. And I got some stuff that I've gone through that I don't want to tell nobody. It, amen. Amen. Come on, I got some choices I made that I don't want to tell nobody. Oh my God. Okay, okay, y'all still trying to act like that. I come on, there's some stuff that occurred in my life that I don't want to talk about. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. But I but I made it through and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord, we're gonna start all over again. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. The thing that was designed to take me out. Because I have a relationship with the Lord, I'm still here. Yes, God. Not by my own strength. That's right, that's Come on, not by my own intellect. That's right, that's right. Are still not by my plans? That's right, that's right. Come on, but by His might. Right, yeah. I'm still, still here. here. Say that. And I'm just wondering this morning, this morning, if there's anybody that's grateful that you have enough relationship with God 
that you're still here. Jesus. Come on. The relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus. has allowed you to go through what you've gone through and still be here. Not out of your mind. Come on. Not not rocking, you know, insane. Not, come on, locked up in, in, in 1400. Not not taking a trip down to a convalescent home in a, in a four-cornered wall. Y'all ain't saying anything at all. Come on. But, but I have the use of my mind. It's still functional. And I'm still here. Come on, clap your hands in honor of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That was the declaration of Brother Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's relational. That's that's what a relationship would do for you. Amen. Allow you to go through whatever you have to go through and still hold on to God's unchanging hands. And so we're grateful this morning and we're honored, amen, at how the Lord has simply walked in the midst. I still, I'm telling you, I got a praise and we may dismiss and go right back into the worship because there is such a praise and worship that's in this house through all that I've gone through. Folks don't understand it. Nobody knows it like you know it. Nobody can tell it like you can tell it. Come on, come on. Been, been heartbroken, disappointed. Nobody can tell it like you can tell it. Come on, to feel like you're all along in this fight. After all you've gone through. Come on. Lord, it was you that keeps pulling me through. Yeah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody said that. They said, Lord, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Come on, I had it hard always. Y'all ain't talking to me yet. Come on, I've always had it rough my whole life. Seems like every time I get going, I get set back. But how is it then that you keep ending up in the presence of the Lord? Well, how in the world, after you've been through whatever you've been through, you keep pressing your way back into the house of the Lord? It seems like the enemy would have convinced you by now that your God keep letting you down. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. It, it, that's what it seems like. It seems like that uh, by now the enemy would have certainly convinced you that there is no you and there is no hope hallelujah in this place but but that's why I hear Joel keep standing up saying look I've lost stuff I've lost family I've lost money I've lost substance I ain't got no help I've lost people I, I've lost relationships I've lost children I, I got, I've had it all taken from me even when I was doing my best and yet Will I trust in Lord Jesus? I feel like I got the folk that know how to trust them in here this morning. Can you stand on your feet? I feel like the folk that, that, that has that kind of celebratory praise, I will still trust the Lord. Yeah, you're in the house. Can you just begin to open up an aisle? Trust you, praise. Come on, come on. I had to go through some rough angles, some, some sharp turns. But, but God, you've been faithful enough to let me reboot you. You've been faithful enough to let me start over you. have been faithful enough to pick me up where I'm falling down. You have been faithful to me even when I wasn't faithful to you. You've been good to me, God. Even when the enemy knocked me a little, he shook me a little. God, you were there all the time waiting patiently. Yes, God. Yes, Thank God. you, Lord. Yes, God. Waiting patiently. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Waiting on my stubbornness. Hallelujah. Waiting on my frustrated self. Hallelujah. Waiting patiently. Hallelujah. And so God, I thank you for your patience. Oh, come on. I know I'm not the only one. Lord, I thank you for your patience. Thank you for being patient with me, Jesus. Thank you for being merciful with me, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for holding me up, Jesus. Thank you, God, for renewing my strength, renewing my faith. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. When I wanted to throw in the towel, God, you wouldn't let me. When the enemy planted thoughts of suicide, you wouldn't let me. Come on, when the enemy told me I was a failure, you wouldn't allow me to stay in that place. When the spirit of depression thought that it would close me up and I would never come out again. God, you brought me out. You brought me out, Jesus. You brought me out. And Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done. God, what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Th